February is designated as American Heart Month, with heart disease being the leading cause of death for both men and women in the country. Cooley Dickinson Hospital is hosting a lecture series on heart health to inform people about how to reduce their risks and to discuss new advancements in surgical procedures. I sat down with an interventional cardiologist at Hampshire Cardiovascular Associates to learn more. Kind of in honor of Heart Month, we've been doing this every year. Um, you know, just bringing awareness to the community, um, coming directly from physicians and experts in the field, I think is important. Um, you know, heart disease, uh, you know, is the, one of the most important um, um, number one killers in, in America and the world. And I think there's a lot that patients and people can do to build their own awareness, learn some things about um, what they can do, um, to, what things to keep an eye out for, um, and, you know, tell their friends and tell their family members. And, you know, coming from um, physicians in a, in a kind of interactive setting where they can ask questions and learn a little more than what you're going to hear just in a doctor's appointment, kind of what, what is our thinking, what do we look at, what do we think about, and what are the things and tests that are involved, and you know, kind of give them a general crash course education on a specific topic, I think goes a long way um, in just building awareness and improving education of, uh, of people and potentially would-be patients. And you were talking about at, that it's the number one killer for both men and women, and I think a lot of people are surprised when they hear that women are in that category, and I know that that's one of the topics for that's the series. That's totally correct. Um, people forget that the number one killer for men and for women is heart disease. In fact, that m almost the same number of women and men die per year from heart disease, most common thing being coronary artery disease. Um, and in a lot of ways, this is, you know, we can augment this, we can prevent this, um, you know, and especially in females where people think about, oh, breast cancer and things like that. Um, but heart disease, again, is very important. And in fact, I think like 55% of um, women don't realize that that is the number one killer. And, and especially in women, sometimes women tend to do worse who have heart attacks. So females who have heart attacks actually have a higher chance of dying than men who have heart attacks. Why is that, would you say? Uh, that's a good question. I mean, we don't really know all the details. I think a lot of it has to do with people think of heart disease as a man's disease. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, it's just not picked up early enough. And females are, um, you know, very, uh, it's not uncommon for females to have atypical symptoms. They're not going to have your classic chest pain, pressure, sweating all the time that men do. They're more likely, in some cases, to have symptoms that you may think is something else. Um, so, um, yeah, it's, it's interesting, you it's know. It's a big and, topic yeah. and a big problem. Uh, so you're an interventional cardiologist. Tell me a little bit about your job and, and what you advise your patients. Sure. So, you, you know, I'm a, I'm a general cardiologist, meaning I'll see patients and treat patients with heart disease and risk factors and trying to, you know, treat patients with active disease and prevent that. Um, interventional means that I'm also a proceduralist, so if someone does develop heart blockages or someone's having a heart attack, um, I'm, I'll do one of those procedures where we go in and perform something called an angioplasty or a stent placement to treat the plaque buildup or the blood clots that are causing the actual event. Um, so I'm kind of twofold. I'll, you know, I'll treat the problem when it presents itself, but I'm also trying to prevent that problem um, from patients um, who I'm seeing in the office. And I know that there have been many advancements in surgery. If you can talk a little bit about that, you know, as people look at their options. Sure. I mean, we've um, gotten very good at treating patients um, kind of minimally invasively with heart attacks. Um, people who have heart attacks these days are much less likely to die if they seek medical attention. We can perform angioplasties and stent procedures through small catheters through the wrist um, and with just mild anesthesia. Um, and there's been a lot of big investments in that same realm, um, treating valve disease, for example. Um, you know, one perfect example is aortic valve disease, which is the most common type of valve problem people have as they age. Traditionally, treating aortic stenosis or narrowing of the heart valve required open heart surgery. Now we can perform this um, uh, in most patients using minimally invasive techniques, using catheters we put through the leg um, and perform a, a heart valve replacement in an hour with no general anesthesia. You're also going to be talking about varicose veins. Can you just talk about the connection to heart disease with that? Sure. I mean, we're, you know, we're kind of cardiovascular medicine, so, you know, the cardiac and the vascular system are kind of connected. Um, so, you know, we have a topic about arterial disease. I'm talking about vein disease. You know, the vascular system is closely connected with the heart, and the healthiness of, um, you know, patients' uh, vascular system can uh, also affiliate and predict patients developing heart disease. So I think, you know, we can't forget that, you know, maintaining um, health in all areas of uh, of, um, the cardiovascular system are just as important. Um, and, you know, this my topic this time happens to be about varicose vein disease, which very common in some cases that can cause, you know, a lot of problems. And uh, let's talk a little bit about prevention. You know, how, how do you advise people, you know, sure. for a healthy lifestyle? Absolutely. 
I think it's critically important. Um, you know, a lot of it is, you know, we take it for granted as physicians as being very basic, but, you know, a lot of patients don't understand or are not educated in that. The most simplest things is, you know, see your doctor and manage your risk factors. So we know, you know, um, from numerous trials for many years what causes heart disease in most cases. You know, smoking, you know, stop smoking. It's amazing how many people still smoke even with heart disease. High blood pressure, you know, control your blood pressure. Um, treat it if necessary, but that requires going to your doctor, you know. Do you have diabetes? Screening for the diabetes, and if you have it, controlling your diabetes. Um, high cholesterol, probably the most important one and the best way we can prevent it. Very easy to get that tested um, with the blood test. You know, people can have genetically high cholesterol. It's not just that, oh, I'm eating a healthy diet. I'm not susceptible right. to this because cholesterol can be very genetic. So all these kinds of things, a lot of these things can be ascertained in a simple office visit. Um, and a lot of that, um, a lot of intervening a lot of those factors, we can prevent uh, a lot of events. And of course, genetics is the other aspect of it. We don't have much control in our genetics, so knowing your family history and you know making sure your doctors know about that, um, so they can you know appropriately um, you know kind of risk stratify you and decide, hey, you know what what should we do different for you? Right. And we were talking a little bit before the interview started about outliers, about people that you would never expect uh, to have <clears throat> a heart attack, and and yet. It happens. It does. I mean, you know, I'm obviously I see this day in and day out. So you see the large majority of patients um, will have some sort of risk factors, whether it's family history, smoking, you know, high cholesterol. But, you know, a small percentage of people can develop a heart attack, even in the absence of those traditional risk factors. I have people who are avid exercisers, swimmers, and, you know, totally healthy lifestyles, good diets, but you can still develop an event even in the absence of that, you know. There are some, you know, there's some tests um, out there and, you know, some new ones developing that we may be able to predict um, kind of subclinical atherosclerosis or plaque buildup in some of these patients more than the traditional testing. Um, I think as time goes on, we're going to have um, even more ways to kind of um, pick up on this. Um, but yeah, there is, you know, essentially anybody could be susceptible to this. That's why even if you think you're very healthy, you got to see your doctor and you got to pay attention to, you know, those unknowns.